Pamela Adlon is on her way in. I'll bring her in. I'm excited to talk to Pamela. Yeah. Tell her to stop. Shut that guy up in the hallway. Lolly, get who the fuck is talking to her? Bring her in. Some guy with torn up jeans. That guy's got nothing going on. Nothing going on. Yeah, who was he? Who was he? Hi, Pam. How are you? Hello. Welcome. Good to see you. Welcome, Pamela Adlon. Mm, You smell good. Thank you. Hi. How are you? We're on. Are you Opie? No, I'm Sam. Hi. And that's Jim. You know Jim. I know Jimmy. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. They're hugging and yes. kissing and he embracing. He doesn't smell like popcorn. He doesn't? Thank you very much. That was a tinkle reference. <laughs> <laughs> she knows. Good. I'm Good. Hi. That's Travis. That's Travis. He's getting fired. And that's uh, awesome. Derek in the back. Yeah. I Who? love it. I've been fired a lot. Have you? Oh, God, yes. From what? Um, uh, lots of things. Yeah, lots of TV shows, TV shows. and stuff. What yeah. did you get? What was the first time you got fired from a TV show? Um, it was probably uh, the Red Fox show. Yeah. You got? Did you? No, did, I got replaced by Sinbad. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, totally. So then you can't probably feel too bad about yourself. You're like maybe they were going I'm for sad something about else. About it, but Jimmy, do sure. a boy thing. Um, <laughs> She handed me a little something and I opened it effortlessly. I'm so not a, a feminist. A I like boys to do boy things. <laughs> Put the bottle of water on. <laughs> so wait, you, the Red Fox show. How old were you when you did that? You were very young, right? I was like 18. And did you? How did you get that gig? Auditioned in drag as Paul Siegel because uh, ah. my other name Siegel. Um, never should have changed my name. Uh, big mistake. <laughs> um, but yeah, like. They were. They wanted a boy to be Red's. Like he was fostering somebody, and so um, uh, all these uh, these these boys auditioned to be that boy. And then I had just done a movie that I played a girl who turns into a boy. Like I grew a dick. I threw like a crystal at the moon. Seth Green sells me a crystal because he's like a little junk man, and. He says, uh, you know, at the total eclipse of the moon, you throw this crystal and think about your deepest, darkest heart's desire. And I wake up the next day and I got a dick. What movie was this? It's called um, Something Special (laughs) or Willy Milly or I Was a Teenage Boy. It had three names. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So This should get a lot more credit because this was way before trans was like a thing. Absolutely. And they should sell those crystals. I know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you but, pass them out to all your you girlfriends. But then yeah. I got fired from down the shore because I didn't, you know, I wasn't like really sexy or or oh. uh, sexy enough. And then, you so, know, yeah, that's something special. So, so when you got fired for Red Fox show, how, how long did you do the show for? I did a bunch of them. Um, uh, I guess, I don't know. I did like six or something like that. And, and uh, boy, this was the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot going on there. It was a, a little bit crazy, but yeah, I was still sad, you know. How'd they tell you? Uh, they brought me into the office and they were like, we kind of can't have you on anymore because it was like, you know, to be honest, like they were, it, there was like a thing about me being a little white girl and Red being this like, old black guy and they were li- like afraid of like intimate uh spaces and things like that and so uh i was like you know i felt like an old black guy inside so i thought we belonged together <laughs> right but um i think that that was kind of an issue you know honestly what was he like as a guy he was amazing he was he was my buddy he was yeah. nice to you oh i loved him i loved him a lot I'll tell you more stories when we're not on mic. When's the, when, when's the first time? <laughs> when's the first time you met him? Was it was it during the audition or when you after you got the gig? It was I auditioned and I had um I had bound my tits and I was I full I mean I looked like a dude. I mean look at oh me. Oh my! There. Is that you in the right? Yeah. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was just like I was just like a little dude. So. You know, everybody thought I was a dude, and he was like, I always knew. I always knew. And he was just, he was the best. <laughs> so, How um, did they find out? Well, Did you after... do something, girl? Did you hand somebody a thing and ask them to open it? Did you open <laughs> yeah. this for me? And like, uh-huh. Oh, my God, that's amazing. <laughs> no, I would never. How did they, how'd they find out? Never. 
um, after each thing, there would always be somebody like the casting woman, Barbara Miller knew, and like I would go in to meet Red, and or I'd meet the the producers, and then I would leave, and they would say. Pamela and I would be like, Shh, don't tell them I'm Pamela. We just told them. So I would walk back in the room and I just open my shirt and I have an ace bandage on my chest. And they would be like, oh my God. Oh my God, that's amazing. That's the red. What are we looking at? We're looking at the. Uh, the Looks like a newspaper for... ad. That's crazy. Yeah, for the Red Fox <gasps> show. <clears throat> oh my God. That's uh, Barry Van Dyke. That's Dick Van Dyke's son on the right. <laughs> the the, the level... handsome dude? Yeah. And that's you right there, the small. Yeah. And there's red. Look, I'm a dude. Yeah. I am Did a you, dude. You just wanted parts so bad at that point that it would be like whatever if I can if I you can mean pass roles. off as I was just <laughs> I did want parts. Um uh, you know, I I just was very comfortable in the gender bendy place. I yeah. always like identified very like in a masculine way. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter how people's perception of me because people are always like, "You're you're so girly. You're such a girl." But I've always been uh, very, just I, I, I'm comfortable in that world. So uh, that was all great for me. Right, and it. It's funny because, like, a couple years ago, I realized I started out doing this, like, crossover thing um, on camera and on stage. And then I ended up getting famous for it in animation. And Bobby has Bobby, right? Yeah. Right. Right. What right. was the boy voice you did? Do you remember when you, I mean, I, mean, I know you're 18, but do you remember the voice you did? when? You... I was like this. I was like, Mr. Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hey, Mr. Hughes, what's up? Oh, uh, that guy was robbing the newsstand, and I wanted to, you know, a little bit different than that guy. <laughs> Bobby Hill. From Orland, Texas. But, yeah, you know, just like kind of my, like, you know, um, I'm a boy, you know, thing. I don't know. Did you teach yourself to do voices because you wanted to work in show business badly, and it's like this is a tool, no. like, or just you just did them? Yeah, I just I just didn't know. I mean, I I grew up like just consuming cartoons, and you know, like all of the like Bugs Bunny and and Wacky Races and all of that stuff. But I never was like, um, oh, I'm gonna get this voice down or anything like that. I didn't uh, have an aspiration to do that. I just wanted to. Work. I just wanted to be in the business. Right. Mm -hmm. So know? did you audition? Like, was that something you're like, okay, I want to do a cartoon voice, or you just happen to do it? You heard about an audition, like, oh, I'll try this. Um, you mean like for for Bobby? Oh, it was an audition. It was just like they just handed me the sides and they said, okay, he's a little uh, twelve year old boy from Texas. And I was like, oh, fuck, I wish I watched Badlands last night or something <laughs> right, to get right. me. You know what I mean? And. Um, and, you know, and just from then on, and for that audition, um, uh, one of them, Greg Daniels, was in a room, and he had a bunch of sketches on a cork board, and he said, I hope you don't think I'm rude. I'm going to turn away from you, and I'm going to look at the sketch as as you do this. And I said, no, it's no problem. And uh, and then I went and I did, uh, I voiced to the animatic, which is like the pencil sketch. Yep. And uh, and then I got it. I didn't know that I was stepping into what would be like the holy grail of, you know, a, a situation right. in life. Yeah. Because that ran for 13 seasons. And, and I think it's fucking brilliant. I learned so much about writing now my own show and working on Louie from being a voice actor on King of the Hill because those those scripts were so brilliant. How long? Uh how long would it take you to voice one episode? Um, for me, no time. But for them to animate it, nine months. One episode? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because that was when it was like wow. not all on computers yeah. and, and whatever. So we would just go in and have a recording one day and we'd be done in uh, like six hours, four hours, whatever. Only, you know, with like fucking around and going to the green room and everything like that. And then the animation process took nine months. Oh Did you God. work with Mike Judge? Or oh, was yeah. he how is he? Yeah, he's the best. Is he amazing? Oh yeah. You would love him. He's just I've it, interviewed him on the phone, but I've never met him. He's yeah, he's really he's a brilliant, sweet, thoughtful guy. 
as as is Greg Daniels, you know. What's he like creatively? Like is he is he telling you like this is this is what it needs to sound like, or is he like, here's the script, like just kind of do stuff with it? They they really got to a place where they were they were trusting the actors. Like we were oh, wow. our own Bible for the characters, and like at a certain point, like season uh, you know nine, I said, can I not say fruit pie or prop comic? For one year, can we just, you know, I can put a stop to that. Why would you say fruit pie a lot? Because, because Bobby loved fruit pies, yeah. you know, and he wanted to be a prop comic, and so, you know, but they went into so many different areas, and I just, I, I learned so much from Mike and Greg and those writers. It was amazing. Yeah. And your show now, um, Sam has seen the three. I have not. I didn't know we had a link to it. I'm a terrible person. Jesus. Better Things on 10, uh, 10 o'clock on FX. On Thursdays. It's a good show, and, and you created it with Louie, right? Yep. How is it also, you know, what we're talking about Well, I created people. it with my life. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but how is it doing a series? Like, Louie's gotten to this place, I feel like, where he gets to so be He's like this. God. Yeah, exactly. He gets to, he He's gets to Jesus dictate. Jesus and Moses. So then... What's he like to work with on something that's so yours? Because this is very, this is yours and your life and the whole thing. Oh, you know, he's, he was, I mean, he's the perfect person because we've known each other for 11 years. Right. Since Jimmy and he and I did Lucky Louie. And um, we should tell the story about how I rummaged to get your sweater. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've, I've told, I still have that. I haven't, I haven't, Pam sent me the, the rich sweater from Lucky Louie. <laughs> No, this disgusting. You don't understand. <laughs> like I, we, we. Okay, Rick Shapiro uh -huh. and Jim Norton and I. Like all of a sudden, they waited nine months. The amount of time it takes to gestate a baby and create one episode of King of the Hill. <laughs> <laughs> they waited that amount of time to tell us we weren't picked up. That's right. Oh. For Lucky Louie. I remember walking with Louie on like 6th Avenue and him going, we still don't, we still have one more shot. The AEC had talked to Robert Wool, who had said it took them a long time to find out when they were doing something. We would call each other. Jim would call me and go, hey, what do you think? What do you think? You think we're going to get picked up? And I'm like, oh, fuck. I think so. I don't think so. I don't know. And then when it got to be like seven months, eight months, nine months, it would be kind of rude at this point if they didn't pick us up, right? Right. So then they didn't fucking pick us up. And so I was like, where's all our shit? Like, you know, Kim and Louie, we had wedding rings on the show. I had a pair of glasses that, that like, this optician made for me. Um, my That red leather jacket. Uh -huh. There's the sweater. Yeah. Jimmy! You know, Jim wore that disgusting oh, the sweater. Gross brown in sweater. Every that... scene but one. <laughs> of every episode every of Lucky Louie. Every episode, every scene. Oh my God. Who's finding these? Is that you? That's killing me. Yeah. And um, also, didn't you wear a thing on your foot? Like an orthopedic. Oh, I got. I, that was for real. I that hurt myself for real. <laughs> that was a legit. That wasn't a character choice. That was Jim Norton stepped into a hole walking across the street. Because you had a foot thing on your foot. <laughs> I had a That's foot thing amazing. on my foot. That's right. That was back then. <laughs> but I went. Oh, I still have that MC5 shirt. But um, I went into the storage space because they said we just threw it into storage and now it's like in general population. I'm like. Jesus, this shit should be in the Smithsonian right. Institution. You loved that show. I loved. I loved that show. Yeah. But I predicted it. Well, predicted what? I said, this show is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they always, they said that we uh, put canned laughs in. Never. They right. had to turn it down. People went fucking crazy in the studio. And... I remember you said it's like it's like they took a crack house, they they emptied it out into a bus, and they brought everybody here. Sometimes <laughs> we would have the craziest audiences, and they'd be talking to us. That's right. They would as be you screaming were shooting yeah. out. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, she didn't. And like none of them knew our characters because the, the episodes had never aired. Of course. So they were all learning about all of us in the in that moment, and they still responded. I'm telling you, it was like the the you know those old um, they would do like barn theater with like uh, Mickey Rooney and like all of that. It felt like that. And as somebody who's been acting since you're a little kid, 
Are you sitting around going like this doesn't happen, guys? It was. I'm telling you, it's still. I love talking about it because it was such a singular time. Yeah. We did two shows on Friday nights. That's right. We would tape. We did. We used to tape Thursday and Friday, and then they condensed it to. Friday. That's right. Or we did two shows in a row. It was. It was nuts. Yeah. We were. We 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 started on Monday. We were off book on our feet taping on Thursdays and it was just electric it was electric Ugh, that was the so laughs good. in that studio you, you know that I remember one guy criticized that a canned laughter the laughter's too loud and I'm like there was Louis would like, call he, he explained the whole sweetening process of laughter yeah and how they sweeten it on every sitcom you've ever seen and he wouldn't permit it he would not allow them to sweeten the laugh oh no so if he, a joke he said bombed, they it would have it. to turn it down because you couldn't hear it and everybody's like, that's so fucking fake. And it was Never 100% fake. authentic. So what was it that you predicted? I knew that it was going to be something and be meaningful. I knew it was going to make a mark, but it would be like a blip on the radar. I knew we were too soon. But that's what I was going to say, because it's one of those shows that, like, what's unfair about it, and somebody who wasn't on it Look but just it watched us. it, like, <laughs> when you put the DVDs in now and just watch it back, you're like... Holy shit! Like, what, why wouldn't this show have gotten picked up? Because why the critics didn't this show killed have it. A life? We yeah. had a lot of viewers and a lot of viewers, and the critics didn't like it. And um, it's so funny how you know people like Louis' success now. He got murdered for this show. I remember. He got fucking killed for Pootie Oh, and Tank. it hurt. It hurt him. They it really. Did. He was broke after this show. Like they really fucking beat up Louis. They and were it not hurt his kind. Feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were nasty. Yeah, Pootie Tang was really tough on him, and then this. Like he had just been, and he had just done a pilot before that, Saint Louis or something like that. But I mean, you know. He really, really tried, and he, I mean, this is all his vision. When we did the camera test, the director on the show was like, please tell me you're not going to shoot it on video. Please tell me you're not. And he was like, I want to shoot it on video. And people were like, <laughs> that show looks like fucking shit, and it looks crazy, and it's not right, and they're not doing it right. But, I mean, And why you know, did he want to shoot it on video? He wanted it to feel like a Norman Lear show. Right. Back from that time when he right. was growing up. And he had a long conversation with Norman Lear, who's one of his idols. And Norman Lear said, you don't think that I had the option of film? Of course I could have filmed my shows. But he chose to shoot his shows on video. And so it was like a warm, comforting thing. So when Louis starts doing well and, like, Louis becomes, like, the critic's darling, mm -hmm. are you, like, at home going, like, I, where were you guys before? You know, it's just, it, it, you know, things come you know yeah. uh, there's a time for everything you know i i'm i was a new mom newer mom when i met jimmy mm -hmm. and there my youngest was not even two years old mm -hmm. and um you know it's just there's there's periods there's there's gestations and you just gotta wait for things to cook and so it's just all part of the growing and learning process and so um, this put him where he is now. Right. Because he was allowed to uh, fail in some respects and succeed because, to me, this show was a huge success. Yeah. Do you see any of the people I have not seen? I bumped into uh, Jerry uh, Minor. Me too. Who played Walter. It was very funny, deadpan. I've not seen Kelly Gould, who, who I thought was so cute as a kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, Emma Stone I've actually bumped into a, a few times. And, uh, yeah. and she had a really nice experience playing the girl who offered Louie a blowjob. <laughs> that That's was right. such an uncomfortable scene. Do you, wait, did you say the line, look at the cunt that came out of that cunt's cunt? Or was that Mike Haggerty? My, well, Mike Haggerty played her dad. So I don't, did he? I don't know. Or did Louie say that? One of you guys. I don't know. Louie. I, I don't remember saying that, but lines. God, it's. <laughs> I don't know. No, that's a different one. That's God as a cunt. That's a different oh, one. That's, <laughs> that's right. a totally different one. That, oh that was. God. They have all of these. That was a different one. That's amazing. We're yeah. just looking at these YouTube. They have this screen. I'm, I'm mesmerizing it. What was it like? What was it like for you being there with, like, being in that? Because you had, you had uh, Rick and Louie and Jim. Like all together, it's this like you know. And Jerry Minor. Yeah, hanging out with the, but hanging out with the comedians specifically. Like, what did you? How did you? 
Oh, and Laura Keitlinger. We were yes. Yeah, Keitlinger. The comedians were the ones paranoid we were going to get fired every week. Laura oh, really? told me that, too. Every week, I'm like, <laughs> I'm done. I <laughs> fucking, I hated the HBO run-throughs would happen on Wednesday. Carolyn Strauss and all of them would come, and they would never let. I fucking bombed at every it's, HBO it's executive run-through. It's not true. Oh, it was terrible. It's because... You're a comedian, so you came into the cold world of television, and they're all just sitting there listening and watching. So the only person who's laughing was Mike Royce because he's going, "Ha! Ah, let's get it going!" <laughs> Mike Royce. You know, and so you know, people don't react, and it's just like I'm so used to that, but you guys weren't. You need something coming back for you. Yeah, that's why the live tapings were always fu- they they went really well, and uh, it was always fun. And like we would have to do another take, and we would go, "What else you got for that?" Like, what all? Because as a comic, he didn't like doing the same thing twice yeah. in front of the audience. He could avoid it. Mike Haggerty was a funny fucking dude too. It's genius. The guy He's who played so his friend, he was really. good. I haven't seen him since. I mean, I I, I should try to keep up with him. He was such a nice dude. Sweetheart, a sweetheart. You have to be proud of of your show now, though. Oh, I am. I can't even believe it. It's like, you know... How is it super autobiographical? Is it like... It, you know, it is. I mean, it's, it's you know, duh. You know, it's my it, my life. It's, I, I'm a single mom, three daughters, English mother, lives across the street. Check, check, check. Right. I'm um, an actor. I do dirty on camera things. I do animation things and everything. But then I'm able to tell other stories like my you know, stories from my childhood that I can infuse into my television daughters and things like that. How does your mom feel about being portrayed as like a crazy... She's happy to be part of the conversation. Pseudo-racist? <laughs> Did you see that episode? I showed it to her, <laughs> yeah. and she said, I know why you put that in there. You know, but it's like, I mean, she never said that. Right. A relative of ours did say that one time, and I was like... Oh, this is a nightmare. What did they of, say? It's a very. Fu- I don't know if I want to spoil the punch. I don't oh, want to spoil the punch. I see. I see. Watch the watch the last episode. Yeah, last week's episode with Lenny Kravitz on it. Yeah. Uh, it was a good one, and I thought I was gonna say that episode did such a good job of like tackling the racial thing without beating you over the head with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean that's the thing. It's like if you get into like a writer's room or a situation like that, people are like, "Why did Why did she say that?" We need an explanation. No, that's not good. We've got to make up for it over here, Mm -hmm. and we need a big payoff over here. I don't have any of that in my show. And I just, it's basically, it's the way I'm feeling and looking at things from inside. It's like the camera's inside my chest. Right. And you guys get to experience it from Sam's point of view. Right. Yeah. It it seems like a lot of your dialogue on the show is probably what you're thinking in yeah. real life. Yeah. Not that you're that, like... Yeah, and I also, I, I wanted it to, uh, I, I just wanted everything to feel authentic and real, and I wanted it to be like, you know, when I would get my actors, I would say just keep it simple. You know what I mean? You don't have to do too much. Don't look for a big button, big payoff. Let the moment lay there like a fart. I'm looking for a lot of farts. This is what <laughs> I want in my show. Yeah. It's what I want in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you like being that creative hands-on, or do, or do you like having the less responsibility of just acting? <laughs> oh, I I prefer uh, the creative. Owning you know, it all. I was like, I had to, so much shit to learn dialogue-wise, mm-hmm. you know, because we were cross-boarding, which means that we were shooting like five episodes in one week like pieces of them. So I'd be like, where am I going? What just happened? You know, trying to piece it all together. And I said, oh God, if we get picked up for season toy, 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 which we just did, I'm just going to react to people. Thank you. I just don't want to have any dialogue. 
<laughs> I just want people to talk at me and me go, mm, I don't know, man. But it's cool to be able to at least weigh in on the process. Because whenever you're shooting something, there's got to be that thing like, Ugh, I wish they were doing this and not that. And when it's yours, they're going to do this and that. they're going to do what you want. Oh, it's incredible because I could just go, you know what? I don't, I don't believe in this. I just changed my mind. Come here, Luke, and I'll take my camera guy. And I say, just put the camera over here. And then we could shoot over here. And I want you to say this. And I don't want you to say that. And I want you to say her. Her line here and there's no ego and there's no preciousness and there's no fucking focus group yeah oh the focus groups always help oh, you think so oh, you like oh, they're terrific yeah, they always yeah. know what i what's oh. funny yeah have yeah. you dealt with them before yeah i mean the first focus groups that i've ever dealt with were when i i was a room parent like in school and like 15 people are on an email and it's just like that sounds great i'll bring banana pie i think we should use the money for a vacuum cleaner in the in the classroom and i just you know every time i get an email with more than one person on it i just reply to one person reply all is a nightmare yeah. it's the same thing in a process when you're making a show and that's why uh, working on FX is so great because they do not focus group you to death. And it's also, uh, just to put, it's called Better Things and it's on Thursdays at 10 o'clock. And by the way, if you have the FX app, that's how I watched it. If you get the app on Apple TV or whatever, you can watch all the episodes. Oh, oh okay. Awesome. So, I mean, the, the three that have aired, not yeah. the whole season, but uh, cool. yeah, it's a good show. And I Thank would, uh, you. I would check it out. We're getting out of here. Oh, yeah, it's 11 o'clock. Our show's is. done. Our show's done. Cool. So watch Better Things Thursday at 10 p.m. Thank you, Pamela. And at Thank Pamela Adlon on Twitter. I'm so happy to see you. I wish we had you uh, for longer. It's good. This is yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. This I'm is so great. proud of you. Thank you. I love this. You yeah, this is fun. You throw it back her. Like, if she says, I'm so proud of you, don't just say thank you. Say, well, I'm proud no, of you, okay. too. No, because no. she's doing, Pam's got her own show. She doesn't need, she, she's, just, <laughs> she, she's proud of me for talking to you. She's I'm being nice. So, so you're just taking I'm the condescension. She's being nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I'm yeah. not. She's a lovely person. She's having a lo lovely person. <laughs> well, that is lovely. Thank oh, you all. We have to take a picture. Yes. We'll be back uh, tomorrow. Yes, we at will. At 8 a.m. Oh, you're still on the thing. Thank you so much. Yeah, all watch right. Pamela's show. She's awesome.